Welcome to this session this afternoon with a bit of focus today on the back and the back body. And we'll begin with reaching. We'll begin with reaching in all directions, wherever you are. On the inhale, reach your arms in the first direction they go. They might go out to the sides. They might go up over your head. Lengthen and keep them in that direction as you as you soften through the shoulders and the shoulder blades and the elbows. So you let them soften a little bit and you keep reaching, reaching out in the same direction, making them further and longer with each attempt and then a little releasing, soothing, letting that go. As you're reaching your arms, check the, the rotation. You might experiment putting the, the palms facing a different direction. If they're facing towards each other, you might try turning them away from each other or vice versa, backward, forward, all kinds of nuance to play with. About five times the, the ones of you who I see are reaching up and then you'll go out at shoulder level. If there's the space around you on the floor, you can do that right there, reaching out and softening, releasing, and then extending. How much space can you give the fingers, the wrists, the elbows, the shoulders, the whole length, lengthening upward and outward. And again, exploring different rotations, different angles for the hands to get at these different little stretches of the body, seeing where you get your sweet spot, where the body feels like it gets what it needs. Exploring a little forward and back if you're sitting and you have the space to open beyond the, the midline. And reaching forward. When you're ready, right in front, same thing. You're kind of coming out of your sockets for a moment and then bringing the shoulder blades in and letting that settle. So you're reaching a little further and then bringing the shoulders down and in. If you're lying on the floor, you might be reaching towards the ceiling. That's right. And if you're sitting, you're reaching the floor opposite, and then you see where else? Where else is there a diagonal? Is there a, 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 a backward that your body needs to find? Is where's the where's the the juice? Where's the the need? You might have noticed that some angle of the hands really gets at some part of the elbow or some part of the shoulder. Let's see if you can loosen up, free up the arms, and the hopes of getting the back prepared for what we will offer in terms of movement. And while you're with the arms, again, whether you're lying down or sitting up, taking an arm across the top of the chest and using the opposite hand to bring that elbow towards the front to really open that backward aspect of the shoulder blade, moving the shoulder blade away on one side, on the other side. And we will get into some specific neck movements in just a moment, but you might start little, little neck explorations, seeing how this stretch of the, the triceps, parts of the deltoid can also be added into, into the neck movement. So two or three times on each side, that arm across the upper chest, one side and then the other. And then we'll do something that looks kind of fancy. There's lots of variations for it, so you'll find how your body does it best. And uh, again, it can be done lying down, it can be done sitting, and this is half of a posture of a standing piece called eagle pose. So when you feel warmed up, bring one elbow into the opposite elbow. And if you can, lean the hands against each other. If you have the flexibility to either grab a thumb or fold them over one more time, the back of your body, the shoulder blades will go down as the elbows come up and the forearms move away from the face. So you might feel that up around the trapezius, around the rhomboids. The shoulder blades go down, the elbows come a little bit up and away from the face, opening up the elbows, letting that angle and the arms open up 
to get at some of that upper back musculature. Whatever you do on one side, you'll do on the other side. The recommendation is two to three rounds on each side, up to four or five if you're going quickly or maybe holding and breathing, if this feels good. Up and away, lifting through the elbows, lowering through the shoulder blades, opening in the forearms. It might be plenty of stretch just to try to bring the hands together, right? That might be the activation for your body is bringing that backs of the hands to open up through the top of the back. That's right, and some of you who are, are feeling it are maybe more flexible. You can do a little rounding of the back, a little miniature cat pose in there, forward, backward, wiggling as you engage through those upper muscle fibers. That's right. If that feels good, keep with it. If you've had enough, let your body rest and come into some soothing movements, some rotations through the shoulders, little circles. And we're going to be here with the, for a little moment with the shoulders. So if you're lying down, it might be a good moment to sit up. And with the fingertips on the shoulder, Z, both, left and right. Elbows come together and then out apart. Forward and back. And that's the opportunity. As they reach back, find that superhero emblem. That's right, lift your chin a little bit, let your back arch a little bit as you show off the power of your mighty chest superheroes, each and every one of you, like you're wearing that cape, so you have to, it's almost like a sail behind you, right? You have to do that thing like the Titanic. Oh. Times there, letting them meet in the front, and when that feels pretty warmed up, like you've got your bearings forward and back, start to draw circles. Get the elbows dancing around, whichever direction they start in, they'll go five or six circles, and then you'll switch. Loop it around. And we'll keep going. Figure eights, drawing the number eights with your elbows. That's right, we've got two options here. I'm doing a mirroring option as if I was doing uh, right opposites, right and left, but you can also do a a symmetrical, a parallel option. I'm learning from you, watching, there we go. So sharing the, the wealth of options, all the different nuance to get in those little nooks and crannies, get the metabolic wastes flushed with your lymph, get the fresh blood in there, get the oxygen molecules. Happy hour for the body, bubbles all around. Take a moment to breathe, to inhale, to supplement your oxygen capacities there, your oxygen levels, as your body's going to enjoy this additional blood flow and that support. We'll move into the elbows and the wrists and the fingers as we do, reaching and touching the shoulders a few times. We've reached, but with the fold and the elbow, all the different directions that you can think of. Where else could you open your elbow and bring the hands back down? A few folds, a few reaches, and we'll do circles with the elbow. So stop part way, somewhere in the middle, and the elbow stays steady, stays the axis as the forearms dance around. And again, I'm doing a, a mirroring image, but you might, it's trickier for me, woo, you might do symmetrical. Everyone's brain works a little differently. For some people, this symmetry comes naturally. For some of us, it's the, the mirror. So whatever works in your body. And from here, you'll do infinity symbols. Infinity symbols. And we all look so beautiful when we do this. I love the arm movements. Take a peek. Take a peek in those little squares and see how gorgeous everyone is. Just conductors of a symphony. Changing direction. Playing backwards now. 
elbows open and close. So with whatever movement you're doing, you've got a straight arm and you've got a folded arm at some point in these extensions. It's about the elbows. Whatever else is fine. You just want them to move and get their, get their lunch here, get their dinner. <laughs> and let them rest. Let the arms rest for a moment as you notice what you've done. And the wrists fold forward and back. In any position, that feels good for the arms. Lift and lower four or five times and then circles. Soft fist in one direction, in the opposite direction. Action, action, action. Got our circles and then we've got our infinities. Oh, this gets really nuanced for the wrist. I can feel a difference between my right and left side and I invite you also to get curious. Are they the same as one side behaving differently? Reversing that direction. And giving it a rest. Whew. So simple, right? So nothing. Not a machine. Not a tool of any kind. And yet plenty of demand on the body, right? Plenty of work. Fingers. Let the fists roll up one at a time. And then open out. Four or five times as before. These hands do so much. Thanking your hands for what they do in the world. One at a time closes and opens. So that we can get better and better at using our smartphones with our flexible fingers. I do wonder what's coming next. I do think this is all transitional. Kitty cat claws, little itty bitty fingers by closing the knuckles, keeping the palms open. I think in a couple of years our phones will just read our minds. We're not going to have to touch them. We'll just look at them and they'll tell us what's on our calendar or what our meeting is supposed to be or that we got an email, right? All right, anything else that the fingers need while they're still working in gardens and kitchens and all the times that you're caring for yourself, for your body, for others, for plants, for animals, for your homes and gardens. Give the arms and the fingers all the stretching, all the movement you might need, you might want. If anything from these movements, yeah, it was especially useful. Get it in again, see if it's changed since you've warmed up all the joints along the way. And we'll get a little even more serious about the back. The cat pose is the classic pose for the back. As you know, I'm a fan of all the variations. I think one I'd like to focus on today is um, dividing the, the classic cat into a wave so that you isolate the various parts of your spine. You might wish to watch for a moment before you try it. And when you do try it, begin with warming up in a classic sense. We'll get to the lower leg joints in just a moment. We'll just go down the, the body from the top towards the bottom today. So you'll warm up the spine in this traditional way, and then you'll divide it out so the movement begins from the back. I'm in the inhale position now, and I'm going to start by scooping my tail, slowly rounding through the low back, through the mid back, my arms engage, I push off, and my head is last to complete the arc. I start again from the back. I begin by lifting the tailbone, by tilting the pelvis, slowly bending through the low back, dropping through the mid back, releasing through the shoulders, and the head is last. So this might be a variation of the cat pose that suits you today as you find where in your back you need that support, that extra stretch. Moving one piece of the spine at a time. 
and continuing with whatever else, what other variations of cat hands and knees you might know you might need. Letting the back be your guide, letting the body suggest which way as you explore and experiment. We'll take a few minutes in these cat poses. We will go into a, an easy cobra and some, uh, some work on the abdomen with, from the from the base, from a prone position. So take a moment to get what you need from cat pose here. And you might wish to shift your body forward and stay there, and you might wish to do a few backward and forwards where you bring the hips down and then lift them back up. So sort of a, a gentle striking cobra, keeping the arms straight for the simplicity, for the, the support. And if you feel like you have the strength in the arms and wish to make it a, a more effortful position, letting the elbows bend as you find that strength to extend the body and lift into the back bend at extension. Striking Cobra, if you know and are familiar with that pose, and a straight armed shift as a modification. Forward and back. And then finding a resting pose, finding a, a moment of pause. Belly on the ground. If that's comfortable for you, the arms can support the forehead with the fists. If you need that, with the hands, with the forearm. And you'll take a few minutes, a few moments here on the abdomen, feeling the body supported, lengthened out in front this way. You have the straight line of the front of the floor. You have that clear guideline for the front of the body to be straight, and therefore the back is straight. Notice how that feels, what sort of reprieve that might be for the back. You might want to lift the head and support the chin with the, with the hands in a crocodile pose. And if you're choosing this, you might also be aware of what you're choosing with the feet. They can point out, they can be back, they can point in. So either in a crocodile pose with the head supported or just resting on the front of the body for another few breaths. And when you're ready, we'll do some variations of locus. This is lifting either opposite arm and leg. If and when you're feeling ambitious, it could be both arms and legs. But beginning, I'll demonstrate with left arm, right leg. On the inhale, the limbs lift, the head lifts. On the exhale, they lower. So this is the beginning of this posture, opposite arm and leg, lift up and lower. And with strength, with the body's capacity, both arms, both legs. Into a flying superhero pose. Plenty of rest in between.
as you complete those movements. We'll continue with a bit of core strength, which is essential for the low back, and then we'll move into the joints of the lower limbs. As you find the satisfaction with the back bend, with the lifting of the limbs, and take a few breaths of rest, you are rolling onto the back when ready. For a leg lock position, beginning with the right leg up to five, Continuing with the left and then both together. When you're ready, the right leg brings the knee up. The arms hold on to the knee. And the upper body lifts, not so much reaching with the nose, but lifting from that abdominal strength, that core power. Lifting and lowering the head and then lowering the leg. Five times on the right. A lift of the leg, upper body. Body comes down, the leg goes down. Two breaths for each repetition. Inhale, exhale, inhale, and exhale. One side, the opposite side. And you might choose to move slowly, you might choose to rest. You might choose to practice both legs together. If you are practicing both legs together, your aim is to move them really as if they were one unit together so that the knees are in the same position through space. The muscles are moving and efforting in an equal way, right and left side. with plenty of rest and giving yourself deeper breaths to nourish the muscles that accomplish these efforts. And I'll lead you to today through a couple hip stretches you might know from before, you might remember. I don't think we've done them in this class for a while. These are stretches for the, uh, the hips, the hip flexors, the deep internal rotators, and for parts of the gluteal um, muscles so that those don't pull on the back. I've also seen time and time again how uh, tight hips produce low back and back discomfort. So the first one is referred to as a figure four, bringing one ankle to the opposite knee where the thigh meets the knee and then this unit of legs lifts up one hand goes in the window there in the eye between the other hand on the outside and it can hold the thigh or the whole folded leg Giving yourself a moment here in this figure four, you have some control over the intensity by a little left and right negotiation, also where the lower leg is pointing, where that lower foot is reaching. Finding a depth that's not too intense that allows you to breathe and soften into it to receive. Honoring any limitations, listening to the body's signals, 
as you offer your body this shape, this stretching shape, this unusual hip organization for a therapeutic reason. And when that feels pretty satisfied, and you might go back, you might really find something useful there, you might rest and return. There's the second variation, and so there's two variations and two sides. So you might switch sides, you might do the two variations. So the first one, this unit lifts up, that was variation one. Variation two, the whole unit shifts over, so it's a twist. The foot that was up in the air goes to the floor on the opposite side. And the trick in this position is to get the floor side hip and leg to soften. When that floor side buttock can release, the stretch shows up in the ceiling side hip. Take your time and be with your body at its speed, at its pace. You might return to any of these shapes or stay in them a little longer. When you're ready to switch from the center, the two sides might have different needs, might have different sensitivities. You're modifying the smallest details. The legs can be further away from the body or hugged in closer for modulating your needs, your, your intensity. And this might be your work for the next few moments. You might find something especially useful. You might want something less intense. You might just like to have a knee pointing a little inward, a little outward. If those figure fours and their variations are too intense, giving your body whatever hip attention it needs. We'll continue with knees, ankles, and toes in the coming moments. So take a few more breaths, a few more moments with, with your hips. And a few breaths of rest. And when you're ready, one leg comes up, you're holding the thigh stable so the knee can open and close. You know that game, up and down to warm it up, and then you draw a circle. The scenic exploration, where can this knee joint go today? Circles in one direction, circles in the opposite direction. And if you're watching, you know I like to switch those directions a few times for my body, three or four in each way, and then the opposite. And with the knee, you choose whether you want to play with an infinity symbol or a figure eight. Either one or both can be quite interesting for some of those tiny movements in the knee. Exploring, drawing a figure eight or an infinity with the lower leg, keeping the knee as the axis that opens and closes. You know that leg is straight and folded. So somewhere in your movement, there's a heel by the thigh, and somewhere in your movement, there's a stretched open leg. 
in one direction, in the other. Letting the knee rest. And going to the opposite side. Again, you're just stabilizing that leg with your hands and you open and close to begin with. Finding the extremes possible. Where can the leg open? How deep does it close? From the opening and the closing, you draw a bit of a shape there, maybe a teardrop, maybe a egg shape, something like a rotation. Around and around. Changing that direction at least one time, if not three times. Left and right. And then drawing a more complicated shape, a shape that crosses in the middle like a figure eight, or its horizontal counterpart, the infinity, working the joint of the knee to explore its subtle movements there, its open shape, its closed shape in one direction and in the opposite. So come to rest. Working through the knees, giving the knees a rest. If you prefer to be sitting, that is absolutely an option. If it feels good to be lying down, you might stay there. You can choose whether you keep your legs extended. We're going to do ankle movements, so forward and backward, pointing through the feet. You can do that with the body extended and resting. You might choose to do that with the legs in the air. You might choose to do that with an additional core strengthening aspect of reaching through the, the legs, forward and back, and then rotations. Rotations and infinities. Infinities in one direction and in the opposite direction. All the different possible movements in the ankle joints. So then finish with the toes, folding and opening through the toe joints. And splitting those apart, splitting them apart so the big toes Separate out from the remainder of the family there and the foot. <laughs> and seeing whatever else your legs might need, whatever else the, the feet, the ankles, the, the knees, the hips might be, might be needing. We're going to do a, a Twist the lying down twist in just a moment. Take a few breaths to feel through your legs, to feel through the knees, to feel through the ankles and the toes. And do whatever other stretching movement, rest you might need. Several ways to move into a twist from this floor position. You might just bring both knees up with both feet on the ground and let those knees come to one side. That might be all your body cares for at this moment, that level of intensity, just letting the knees drop to the side and turning the head. Or you can go a little more deeply by keeping one leg straight, one leg crosses over that straight leg and the knee keeps making that twist deeper so that you're into a fuller back, a universal twist. Of 
holding a few breaths, listening to the body, always responding to what the body says it needs. When you're in this posture of this straight leg and crossed over leg, you have some control over what you do with this opposite arm. So you might lengthen it accordingly to get at the parts of your back that are needing that attention. And you might be here two times on each side. You might just be here one long hold on each side. No rush and no hurry. You might not be feeling the twists much at all. You might just lie in the center in a shavasana, in a classic resting pose. Wherever you are, listening to your body, listen to your breath. And keep getting softer, keep exploring what you can do to surrender, to let go. Take your time, as always, with the twists, with whatever else is in the, the joints and the subtle movements. We'll go from here into a downward facing dog, into a mountain pose. So if and when you're ready, you'll be invited to turn back onto the hands and the knees. You might take a moment there, setting up, getting ready, tucking your toes under, and lifting the hips into this inversion. If you're doing it on the floor, you might be doing it against the wall. And making this about the back, making this about lengthening the distance, the space of the hips from the hands, the hips from the head. And this one is yours. This one is yours to hold and breathe or to lift and come back down. Exactly right. If it feels too intense, try it against the wall. Some of you are reaching your legs to make it more about the hips. Excellent. Whatever you're doing, keep thinking long spine. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Lengthen and strengthen. We will move into the standing postures if some of you are ready or, you know, don't wait for me. <laughs> Bringing this position into a standing pose with your small movements, your careful movements, your slow movements. Up to standing, and when you're standing, it takes a moment just to show up in standing. So find, find that emblem again, that heart space open, the shoulders back and drop. Stand tall, ready for the world. Interlace the fingers, flip those over. And as you reach up, lengthen the whole body. Let the shoulder blades be down as you come up on the toes. Sides 
Some of you come up and down, and that's great. Some of you come up and stay up. And that's great too. Lengthening out, lengthening up, making your back bigger, longer, taller, more stretched and strengthened out, right? Less collapse, more extended. From the up and down, we go into side to side. A wide stance for your steadiness there. And all the choices about the arms down low, up high. Both together. Find what works for your shoulders today. Find what your arms feel best in doing today. And I think every time I've taught it, I've taught it dynamically, moving left and right, right and left. But you might even hang out. You might stay there for a moment and breathe. Maybe not as deeply, maybe less, less deeply, but to feel what is it in the in the side, in the ribs that can open, that can let go. What can I invite that space into the side of the body? Play with the fine details of your knees and hips, your tailbone, are you tucking, are you tilting? Can you open more in the chest? Can that elbow reach back? Does it feel good to round forward? Does it feel good to arch open? Side bends are my favorite. <laughs> So needed in our human bodies that tend to live in flexion and extension. We tend to live in our cars and at our desks and at our tables. And so those side, side bends are so welcome. Keeping the open feet, keeping the wide legs for the standing twist. You know this one well. You might do it slowly. You might need to get into it with your body. You might need to hold and breathe, and you might do it quickly. You might like the dynamic. We've got these three classics, the straight up, the side bend, and the twist. And I like to pair those with that forward and back for a complete, not just spinal workout, but also digestive support. These are the key positions to care for all the organs that live at the center of the body here. So as you feel complete with the, the first three there, the up and down, the side to side, and the twisting around, you might choose to bring your hands together for that touch, that contact, the thumbs on the breastbone, just to know that you're upright. That pressure helps open the elbows, helps engage through the shoulders. Inhale, open and back bend, high release. Exhale, slow forward bend, only as deeply as feels comfortable and available. Inhale, to open, exhale, to close.
as you move through this combination at your pace, you might return to the vertical. I've been skipping it today. If you're noticing, I'm moving back and forward today. You might also find that something there gets a little extra attention, that something in that forward bend is like, ooh, if I bend my knee or my hip, I can really get at that spot between the shoulder blades. Or if I tuck my chin in, I can get the back of the neck so keep it alive, keep it exploratory, keep it, keep it organic. Where, where else, how else can you reach? Where else can you find something for this body? As you bend it forward and bend it back. This might be plenty for some of you. Some of you might like to interlace the fingers together behind and get the shoulder blades real close to each other by lifting the hands. And you might do this combination of forward and back with the hands interlaced and together. Remember to breathe as you move. Remember to rest in between efforts. I'm being kind to yourself. I'm giving suggestions. You are making the decisions. So giving yourself the stretches that feel nourishing, that feel helpful, honoring the limitations, honoring the body's wisdom. Excellent. Let's have a little balancing pose. We're starting a new month. The month of May is here. Let us come back to this dancing variation, and that might be just holding a knee with one or both hands in the front of you. This might be your balance. Eyes focused, rooted steadiness. And if that feels good, that same foot might go to the back, and you might hold the foot behind. If you'd like to try the whole pose, one foot is in your hands behind, the other hand is forward and reaching, and then the heel moves away from the hip. Being near the wall or holding onto the wall is a great way to support your balance, to give yourself that added security. And the eyes are open and fixed. And the recommendation is at least two rounds on each side, at least twice, altering left and right. However intensely, however modified, and always the option to practice mentally, always the option to do an effort in the mind.
So there we go. I think every joint has been addressed. Notice what you need before we get all the way into the breath and into yoga nidra. Take a moment to see if your body feels a little better, maybe has a request. Oh yeah, I'm seeing a bow and arrow happening. I'm seeing some other balancing variations. Cool. And what else do you, does the body need? Really feel into this. Let's take two minutes to, to give yourself what you need. And that might be rest, really. Rest is definitely medicine. Rest is therapy. Asking the body, what do you need? What else do you need? We had a beautiful warm weekend and the weather in the coming days is cooling down. So the body might be feeling a little bit of that, it might be contracting and you can reassure your body that you're here in service of health and wholeness. You'll keep your body warm, you'll keep your body sheltered, safe, and fed, tucked in with comfortable bedding and places to rest. And I do invite you to bring yourselves into a resting place. We'll move into a breathing practice and a yoga nidra. And especially when you're lying down on your back more than ever, you can say that the earth has your back, if your back is resting on the earth. But even if you're sitting, the earth has your back, right? Ultimately, we are on a planet that does hold us. We do belong here and are held in position and place. And sometimes that's the reassurance that the back needs to be reminded that earth is here, gravity is working. So as you get comfortable, whether that's in a sitting position or lying down, the focus for the next few minutes will be the breath. And that begins with establishing a connection to the breath, with uh, slowing down enough to, to let the breath become natural, to release the efforts of the mind and the efforts of the body. And just be, just be in this miraculous breathing thing that is the body. Practicing this trust in witnessing the breath. You know the inhale will arrive. The body knows to take it. And the exhale will arrive. The body knows to release it. See if you can play that game that you let your body exhale and and you wait, you wait for that inhale to show up spontaneously. In the way that you watch for the exhale to show up spontaneously. The body just knows, right? This is the, the extent of the inhale and it switches, switches to exhale. And see where you can feel this breath as you're allowing a completely natural body directed breath. Where can you feel it? Where are the physical sensations of this experience? Where do you notice the breath in the body? And it could be that you can feel it throughout the trunk and torso. 
Hopefully you feel the breath around the, the chest and the physical lungs. You might feel some in the throat and the nose. And can you feel it out to the armpits? Maybe you need to exaggerate the breath a little bit. You're welcome to do so, to feel it around back, around to the shoulder blades. And this glide that the body does with the expansion, gliding into expanse, and gliding into the exhale, the contraction. And can you feel this breath in the pelvis? Can you feel it down around the hips, around the pelvic floor? That pressure of the inhale, displacing the digestive organs, pushing on the pelvis content with inhale and the release, hopefully with exhale. We'll come back again today to a progressive breath, a breath to increase your lung capacity by breathing in and pausing, continuing the inhale with another pause and completing this inhale. So your inhales will slow down to take three sips with a pause along the way. During the pause, the body softens during the pause. You find how to invite more breath, how to make space for more breath. And as you breathe in this way, particularly if you have felt the tension in the back, imagine this breath expanding, nourishing, reaching the back, the shoulder blades, upper and lower back, around the armpits, breath coming in, expanding the body, stretching from the inside, nourishing the back from the inside of the trunk. And this might feel very nice. You might like to stay with this and you might like to take out the pauses and take a just a full smooth inhale. You might like a, a few giant breaths. It's like the last call here. Get all the oxygen. You'll keep breathing. You won't stop. But this is the, the big, the big wave. Filling your body up with this breath. And as the body lets go, as you come into the next exhale, let the body recalibrate in a natural rhythm, an effortless breath. We'll stay with the breath for a few more minutes. As we've done in the past, bringing the awareness around to the area of the throat, watching the breath at the throat. And you might imagine a light contraction, or you might physically engage in a light contraction at the throat as if to Make the sounds of the letters A-H, breathing in, and the letters H-A, breathing out, but without the vocals, just making that bit of muscular shape in the throat as if to vocalize, but you're breathing in ujjayi, in the deep ocean breath, 
like a subtle roar. If you can, you listen to this whisper, this baby snore of a sound. Maybe you're just thinking of a voiceless roar. This breath can be soothing to the nervous system. And with it, let the back of the body release its emotional tension, let it roar its needs, its desires, to let the back of the body roar through the throat. And this might be very nice. You might stay there. You might hum as you exhale to make even more energetic shifts for yourself there, and you might choose to release. You might be in a natural breath, easy breath. As I invite you to prepare for the practice of yoga nidra. So in a few minutes, you'll be guided through this guide the systematic relaxation practice. You can do this as always in any position. The recommendation is lying down because that's easy on the body, easy on the muscles, but if you choose to be sitting that is absolutely a fine choice. The request is that you be comfortable. So whatever position you're choosing, know that you can shift, you can change, you can reset as needed. The body is the boss. The body is the most important guest at this event. And so I invite you to check in with the spine and the muscles of the back, with the limbs and the joints. And notice what you might need to be comfortable in this guided meditation. If there's any small detail, even a button to unbutton or a bigger detail like going to get another cushion from a different room or turning out a light or something, anything, whatever you need. The settling process is a part of the practice. We all need to settle in. This is universal. Everyone takes a moment to shift from one activity to another. We've shifted from stretching and moving to breathing, and now we're shifting from a focused breath to something more subtle, to a practice of the mind, letting the mind be guided through this resting body. And so organizing the body to its greatest comfort, ensuring you are supported. And that the breath is free. The breath arrives and departs effortlessly. And this is the moment to begin collecting all the things that you wish to be with and surround yourself with. Fill the heart with gladness. Make that list in your, in your heart of the things that bring you joy that bring you gladness. Make a list of the ways you feel supported. And there might be few items on that list. There might be thin pickings, but there are ways in which you are supported, if nothing else, than by Earth herself, by this great planet that holds your body. You are supported with the atmosphere and this mixture of gases that we call air in abundant supply for our life. 
perfect blend of gases to be alive in. You are supported. You are supported in however subtle ways, in however obvious ways. Take that moment to run through the mind. Those joys, those comforts, the things that bring gladness, that inspire gratitude, and especially those that are support, that show up as support. And the body has an internal support structure. You might feel the bones resting deeply in the center of the, the various tissues, inside of the skin, inside of the muscles, the structure of the bones, the body holding the body, the way the earth holds this body. Check if there's any way to be more comfortable, any small detail for this body to be at greater ease. upon this earth, wherever you are, on the floor or on a piece of furniture, you've got gravity. Gravity is holding you. Trust that for this moment, at least, there's nothing to be done. For this moment, there is no one to please, no one to answer to, no one to cater to. All of the resources are yours. For the next few minutes, you are fully focused on yourself. In this restorative practice, this regenerative practice of yoga nidra, sacred dreaming, bringing yourself into the space between awake and asleep, bringing yourself into that space of awareness, the awareness of awareness itself, awareness of body, of breath, and of that which is here now. This body, this breath, And all of this support, all of this gravitational field to hold and support this life. Notice the support at the feet. Notice the support in the, in the heels and the ankles. Along the edges of the feet, the bones of the feet supporting the structure of the feet. Earth holding the feet. Right big toe, second toe, third, fourth, and fifth. And the left big toe, second toe, third, fourth, and fifth. Be aware of these toes. The sole of the right foot and the left foot. The tops of the feet, right and left. And again, that contact of where the heels touch the floor. Supported. Feel along the tops of the legs, shins, kneecaps, and the fronts of the thighs, right and left. And feel along the backs of the legs, Achilles tendons, left and right, the shins, right and left, backs of the knees, left and right, and the hamstrings and the buttocks, right and left. Feel through the backs of the legs. Both buttocks and the hips and the sacrum and the center of the back there in the pelvis. As you move the awareness slowly up the spine from the tailbone and sacrum, up the five bones of the lumbar spine, these largest spinal bones. There's strength and support in the low back. And the mind moves along the 
middle of the spine, the thoracic spine, 12 bones of the spine, each connected to a pair of ribs. So the spine that supports the middle of the body has the support of the whole rib cage. And the top of the spine, the seven bones in the neck, Let the awareness move into the neck and head. Be aware of the back of the head and the top of the head, the right and left sides and the ears, forehead, eyebrows, eyebrow center and the eyes, both cheeks and the nose, upper lip, lower lip, chin, front of the neck, right collarbone, shoulder, upper arm, elbow, forearm, wrist and hand, right hand thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring and little finger. And the awareness comes up to the left collarbone, shoulder, upper arm, elbow, forearm and wrist, left hand, thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring and little finger, together. Together the hands and arms, together the neck and head, shoulders and chest, upper back, lower back, abdomen and pelvis, right and left leg together, both legs, the trunk and both arms, neck and head together, the whole body, the whole body, the whole body. And be aware of the whole body, resting the whole body, Breathing, the whole body supported. The whole body supported. Connect to, to the earth, connect to gravity. Feel the support of the earth. Trust that gravity is here, holding this body. up and under. What else has your back? Who else has your back? What are some of the smallest ways in which you and your life are supported? Make that short list to remind the back, to reassure the back that you are not alone. There is support. There are helpers. There are resources. What does this body need? Let that be the question. What do you need? What do you need? And how do I feel? One of the most important questions at this moment, right now, how do I feel now? And how do I wish to feel? What do I long to experience in my body? In the whole body. The whole body. You might stay right where you are. This might be the place to be. 
And you might choose to start making little efforts, breath efforts, little encouragements of the body, thanking the body for this practice, thanking the body for its wisdom, listening to the sounds and listening to the body and feeling the body and allowing for a deeper breath little wiggles in the toes and the fingers, stretches, folding up and hugging the body, however you need to move is correct. Thank you for listening as you emerge or choose to emerge or choose to stay in the practice of Yoga Nidra. This is your time, your practice. So be gentle with yourselves, keep breathing, Keep reassuring yourself, too. That's part of it. Each one of us, our own cheerleader. So. Notice how you feel. Notice what's changed. Notice what was most helpful. And if there's something you might incorporate in the, the days before we meet again. And for now, I thank you again for being here. And our class is complete. Thank you for watching. Please like the video and leave a comment about your experience. And while you're here, please subscribe to my channel and opt in for notifications to catch the next class I upload. And then head over to olgaschwa.com to join in a live event or to work one-on-one -on -one with me. I'm here to help.